Hey guys, so welcome to uh, part one of the custom Linux build that um, that I've just finished. Um, the full PC parts picker list will be on my uh, on the web page as well. So um, first thing, uh, only uh, 98 of my 128 gig of RAM is showing up. That stuff I'll um, I'll uh, sort out and you know tweak and figure out. Um, so uh, right now we're in BIOS. We got there by pressing F2, and what we're going to do is um, do the steps that we need to do to uh, install uh, Linux on this guy. So I've already installed Windows on this, but what I'm about to show is just settings. If you plan on uh, running dual boot, um, some things you have to disable. So um, the other thing I wanted to note too is um, if you're around your IT guy or any of the systems installs guys, um, give them a big hug because um, I've realized how painful this process can be and um, yeah uh, never take that stuff for granted so um, so if we go into the boot menu and just um, click on it we want to scroll all the way down and we're gonna go to secure boot okay so in secure boot um, first thing is to make sure in OS type now OS type defaults to um, if you install Windows for which, which I did to the Windows UEFI and we don't want that um, so I just had to um, turn that on uh, to other OS and the other thing is uh, key management so this is to ensure that uh, again stuff just works with Linux in a dual boot environment is um, I just deleted the boot keys from in here and um, <clears throat> again it's just to make uh, this as hassle free as possible now the other thing to, to note too is uh, when you are doing this install, if you are on um, a dual boot or if you have any other drives connected, disconnect every other drive except for the um, the OS you want to install on. So once you've done that, you'd um, press F10 and save changes and reset, and you'll see it's um, it's just rebooting now into the BIOS. So again, we just press F2 to get back in and um, give it a second. And here we are. So yeah, we're going to go into easy mode now. And um, while that was rebooting too, I, um, I added the uh, DVD, uh, which has the Linux install boot, boot, uh, boot stamp thing from uh, Autodesk. So you want to select the middle one, not the UEFI. That one won't work. So if we just um, select the UEFI, uh, sorry, not the UEFI, but the middle one. Um, and again, your name will change based on what your hardware uh, device is called for a DVD player. But we press that and it's going to reboot and you'll see this loads up the, uh, the Autodesk Kickstarter and you see we've got all these installs we could do but um, again up down we'll toggle through and the one we want to install is uh, the Autodesk Flame Premium Workstation so we just select that and hit enter okay so again it goes through um, this whole process is pretty much automated. You don't actually have to touch anything until the end. Um, once it's gone through, there's a little visual indicator and then there's a little prompt just to reboot at the end. So um, once this is loaded up, I'm just gonna skip past this because it's literally just, just letting it do its thing. It takes about like 25, 30 minutes. So we'll skip ahead. Okay, so as you can tell, uh, I couldn't record the screen with this because the XORG is a weird res, so I've just used a demo recorder. But there's a couple things you have to, well, that I did. Again, this is my steps to do this. I changed the um, the, the root password by default, which is uh, using the PASSWD, and I just entered my new password. And this is on Autodesk's um, recommended way to do things. So that's, you know, the first thing to do is change. And now we are changing the host name. So again, it's another uh, command line guy, which is hostname CTL, and then space set, and then dash hostname, and then um, I'm going to call it sysolioge, and then enter. And if you want to test that too, you just press cat space etc slash hostname, and then it will um, it'll verify that once I type that in. And there you go, you see it's uh, it's done that. So now we are going to uh, install the NVIDIA drivers before the DKU. Um, it's just how I got this to work for my um, 
my Titan X Pays. So the first thing is uh, we're going to run a command that's going to disable the uh, the default uh, loader of the default graphics driver for the system. So we do echo and then little comma th colon thing, blacklist, space, nuvo, and then another one of those guys, and then two forward little things that I don't know what they are, but anyway. And then space etc, space mod probe, dot d, yep. And then forward slash blacklist conf conf. And now what we're going to do is uh, disable the GUI. So we're going to install the Linux drivers. And again, I've already got my Linux drivers in the downloads folder. So they're already downloading and, uh, and ready to go. So I'm just going to do system CTL space disable GDM. And this again is going to disable the GUI. Now I'm just going to press reboot and we're going to go through the reboot process and uh, to the command line uh, interface. So we're in the command line. So the first thing is to log in. So I'm just using my root and the password I set up. And we're in. Now I'm going to navigate to my directory, which is current directory, which is downloads, which is where I save my, my drivers. I'm going to ls that. And you see there's the guy. And uh, all I do is just press bash and then n and then tab and enter. And you see it's going to extract the NVIDIA driver and do what we want. So again, this is pretty automated. I'm just going to click on accept. So tab over the left, let it do its thing. And I just did yes for this. And yes again. So I'm going to apply that to my xorg and then OK. And now we just need to enable the GUI again. So if we just type in down the bottom system CTL space enable and then GDM and then enter. And then we just reboot. So reboot and then enter. Again, I'm going to have um, uh, these commands and stuff listed too. So it's easier to step by step if you have to. So, so we're logging in now. And now it's time to do the Autodesk DKU, which should be pretty straightforward. And we'll let it log in. OK, so I'm just going to open a new terminal. And then again, I've already uh, downloaded this. So uh, and I'm not good at terminal, like you can see. So I'm just doing CD LS and then CD downloads, I'm pressing tab and then enter. And there's my DKU. So CD D tab and then enter. And if we LS that, you see all we have to do is this period forward slash install DKU and enter. Now it's going to ask, do we want to use a generic configuration? And we press Y, and that's because. Um, this is not a supported build at all. It's completely custom. So we'll let this uh, again do its thing. Again, I'll um, I'll put a link on the header and on the the post for this for all the things you do have to have downloaded already. So uh, the other thing to note too with this, I um I didn't bother setting up the networking because I'm doing this from home. So I don't really like, I already have a, I'm not worried about it in a multi-network environment because this is my freelance box. But um, if that's the only other thing I'd maybe ask all desk about the networking, which I didn't really do. So again, that's done. I'm going to press reboot and we'll let this do its thing. It's going to reboot after the DKU install. And now I've just logged in after. Um, you see the res is weird. That's because it changes the XOR config, but this is going to be installing the application itself. So again, I'm going to navigate to downloads in terminal and do CD Autodesk flame tab. Here we go. And then in there, if we do an LS, it 
didn't do that right. So we'll give it a second. Again, you can tell I'm super uh, Linux savvy. And again, if there's easier and smarter ways to do this, please um, let me know in the comments. But this is just the recipe I found that worked for me. So again, current directory auto as flame and then ls, and now it's going to work. So now it's literally the period slash install tab and then capital F tab and then enter. And this will open up the uh, the flame installer GUI. There we go. And we'll just press continue and just continue. And I'm going to turn on keep because I want to keep my um, my custom graphic stuff. And I'm going to skip the, um, oops, sorry, I should have, I'm going to skip the media storage setup and do that ju just after, just manually through the, uh, the flame setup config file. So let this do this thing. The other thing to note too, um, this is just for making sure this opens and closes and exports and sees both my uh, Titans for a background reactor as well. Um, again, part two of this will be the setup of the RAID card and the proper config of the uh, the MNT storage media stuff. So this is just uh, getting this to work on a completely custom uh, flame system. And we'll just skip ahead. All right, so that's done. Um, let's restart and then log back in. All right, so I rebooted and now I'm just back in uh, in Flame. Um, I just set up a temporary frame store location in the setup utility. So let's just test to make sure that um, background reactor works and Flame works. So I'm going to open that up. And yep, I've got a test project set up, so I'm just going to press start. And let's just go to reels, and let's just quickly do a new this guy just to see. Actually, I can just go in preferences in general, and let's just make sure yes, background reactor is there and set up. So. Uh, next, uh, the next thing we're going to do in the next video is uh, set up the actual RAID card and the frame store. So uh, that's it for this uh, Linux build custom workstation part one. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful.